This is Matt from Machuca Moama Physio. They're just on Fennedy Street. I'll just get the uh, slideshow set up. Don't be offended that I'm wearing a mask when I'm near you and taking it off. My wife had surgery last week, so I'm just a bit paranoid that I don't want to get COVID. It's not you, it's me, okay? <laughs> we probably all live that a little bit. Um, look, I've got some PowerPoint slides. I hope that kind of helps as well. Um, and Brian's given me a very broad topic of what is physio, which is probably what you've just lived. Yeah. Really, really hard to answer. Because yeah. <laughs> I know what I think physio is, but actually putting that on slides is really hard. Um, so look, uh, my name's Matthew, and we've been operating out of Kai for about eight years now, but we've had our own building near the medical centre for about three. We didn't realise for five years we were maybe a little bit invisible. Um, we actually rented that room over there for about three or four years before you were here. Yep. So what did I want to cover today? What are the different types of physio? Because physio is really broad. Um, what conditions do we treat? What treatments do we use? And then I thought, look, I really want to talk about kind of what are the common things that go wrong in the gym? Uh, I've got a case study on what we see goes wrong when people manage their own injury. Um, and then maybe a little bit of factors in the gym that can put you at higher risk. Hopefully that's useful. Um, so what do we do? Look, uh, there's probably going to be a lot of repetition with Tegan. I mean, I think lots of professions do the same thing in a different way. Um, but we all think we're doing much the same. There's a lot of overlap um, between that. So look, we're looking to help people also recover from injury improve their mobility, reduce their pain. I think probably the thing that physios do a little different, particularly to, to chiros and osteos, is we're probably looking to get you doing more. So looking at preventing the next injury as well as managing what's happening now. Um, so rehab is a big thing that we do and we like working with Brian and sending him a few difficult patients <laughs> um, for more long-term rehab because we sort of palm them off. Some people just need to get fitter and stronger. Um, so just a bit of background, physios don't need a referral from a doctor. People often think that you do. Uh, even work cover and TAC now don't require a referral. Um, we also, the team approach works well. You know, down the track, if you're injured, whether you see Tegan or me, we'd like to think we're going to work with Brian, we're going to work with a doctor if you need. Um, doctors don't always know as much about shoulders and backs and things as you'd want them to. Um, so sometimes first port of call might be Tegan rather than the doctor. If she needs the doctor, then you need the doctor. Um, maybe it's not always the first port of call. I'm married to a doctor, I'm allowed to say that. <laughs> um, so what sort of treatments do we use? Look, we're looking to assess, diagnose what's wrong with you, try and probably give you a better understanding of what's happening for you. Because the more you understand, the more you'll be able to manage your condition. You know, knowing what to do, knowing what not to do. I always like to come up with some kind of plan, give you something written down so you can take it home and think I'm going to work on A, B and C and maybe give you a time frame. I think that sort of stuff can be really useful. Um, treatment methods, look, there's lots of overlap with manual therapy. Uh, you know, pushing on joints, loosening muscles, dry needling. Hydrotherapy would be great. You just have to go to Shepparton to do it, I think. Um, sometimes this is probably where we overlap with the gym in getting people doing rehab maybe moving in better movement patterns rather than jumping straight into managing it yourself. Um, but we'll get to that. Um, look, it's more than just sports injuries, musculoskeletal injuries. I do a couple of hours a week in a factory looking at people standing on conveyor belts. So doing ergonomics and looking at office ergonomics and that sort of stuff. More than just um, treating stuff. I actually quite like that. Get out of the clinic. Um, one big thing, look, there's a long list, the same as myotherapy, you do a thousand different things. One thing I really like that we're doing a lot of now is working with NDIS patients. We've got lots of you know, varying levels of disability where it's not really about whether they play footy or not, it's whether they can stop falling over. 
Um, so NDIS is a really big thing. Um, and I don't know if you do much, Brian, with NDIS clients. I think it's going to be something big. Yeah, it, it's something we've got to look into. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm not really sure on where our, our sort of um, points are with that. Sure. So um, it's certainly dis disability is a really big, uh, a really big target for, for manual therapy and treatment. Um, we work in a variety of areas, public hospitals, private hospitals. Um, obviously, we're here in a clinic. Some physios tour with teams. Uh, like I said, working in factories is something people don't always think about either. Um, we've all gone to university and studied uh, at least an undergraduate degree. You've got to be registered with the board. So hopefully you can trust us. Um, you can't call yourself a physiotherapist <laughs> unless you've ticked all the boxes. Um, like I said before, we work closely with Brian with difficult patients. You don't have to be difficult to work with us, but... <laughs> um, so, common injuries in the gym. Uh, look, the main thing it's I would tick. say, the thing I see most of is this stuff, is shoulder overuse. but. Shin splints, knee pain, ITB kind of is knee, wrist, shoulder, lower back, elbow, pecs, groins. Ankle sprain was on the list. I don't think I've ever seen anyone sprain their ankle in the gym. Um, does anyone have any other things that add to the list? I thought, I thought I thought the least muscle was really the step Yeah, okay, it's a calf tear. Yeah. <laughs> um, so how can we manage injuries better? I think that's kind of an important question. So I've just got a case study um, that one of the other guys did at a sports trainer's night we had recently. And it's classically what I think we see. I reckon Tegan would say the same. So good footballer, strains his hamstring round three. He's tired, he's sore, he limps around a bit. He thinks it's going to be three or four weeks. Um, he rests up, gets a bit of massage done, goes to training, the trainer works on it. Ten days later, feels pretty good, trains lightly, goes out and plays, bang, does it again. Um, you know, ends up missing six weeks. Um, does anyone, can anyone relate to that? So a lot of people get injured, they sort of do a little bit of treatment, they don't come back, they see Tegan once or twice, then they think, all right, I'm, I'm right, I feel really good. Bench press again, bang, gone. Um, it's a classic presentation, and the reason, or one of the reasons for it, um, are some of these other things that are going on. So sometimes people are injured, you see it a bit with footballers, they take up a job as a salesman, they sit in the car 10 hours a week where they never used to, and then they strain the hamstring. So there's lots of other things going on in the background. I won't go through all of it. Um, but lots of other things that are behind an injury rather than just I did one bench press hurt my shoulder. Um, there's a lot more behind it. Now this is a really exciting um, chart. So look, in professional sport, they're always measuring your chronic workload with your acute workload. Because what you'll find is that you get very, very good at what you do all the time and you get almost bulletproof at doing it. The person who's likely to get injured is not the person who's doing the most, it's the person who's coming off the least and then does something. So what this shows is that if you're normally working at a certain level and you increase reasonably quickly, you're in, you're in a danger zone. And the magic number, it's a very magic number, are about 10% week on week. If you go above 10% week on week loading, you're at high risk. Um, of getting injured because it's too quick. Um, does that make sense? So that's something that I think is actually really good to understand. It, it's very um, appropriate here. You get people that are trying to increase rapidly. Your risk of injury goes up rapidly. Um, if you're progressive and you work at it, you are almost bulletproof. You won't get injured from what you do all the time, but you'll get injured if you do that. And that happens more often if you've backed off for a long time and then you try and do it again. So 
there are a couple of things that I see. The, the, the hammy that doesn't give it very long and then just jumps in. And then the person who probably backs off, and COVID's been really good for business because people, <laughs> gyms have been shut. People go back to the gym, they get injured because they've dropped right off and then they go bang. I don't know if you saw any of that, Brian. Uh, a little bit, a little bit. Like, um, but yeah, I myself I just haven't really fired back up again yet. <laughs> yeah, right. COVID's been interesting. COVID's yeah. been um, hard work for sports people because it's just been off. Hmm. Um, gyms have been smashed. People going to gyms have got injured because they can't go to the gym. Um, but acute and chronic workload, 10%. Remember 10%. Stick below 10%. You're almost bulletproof. Um, so how can we help? Oh, look, we've sort of gone over this. Um, I'd like to be able to tell you kind of what's wrong with you, how long is it going to take, what am I going to do, what are you going to do? Um, and ultimately we can get a plan based on that. Um, early recovery, one thing we've found, people often, like that example with the hamstring, they don't do anything for a while, they have sort of a week or two just doing nothing. If you're at an AFL club, they get you running as soon as you can run. If you can't run, you walk, you ride a bike, you do all these other things. So um, getting advice on appropriate loading is really important because early rather than late is better. Um, might not make sense, but if you back off too much, you've got too much to catch up on. Um, another busy slide. That really is a study that was done recently effectively showing the green line is someone who's gone back to rehab earlier rather than someone who's waited where you think I'll be cautious and wait. Um, by all means be cautious and wait from things that are really hard to do but start early and you'll get going better. Um, I can't remember what journal that's out of. It's on there somewhere. Um, so return to running is an example of that. How do you work out how to do that, look, that's obviously something we're going to help with, trying to work out, you know, walk, run, light training, full training, etc. cetera. Um, ideally, we're working on things broader than just one thing. Someone who's strained a hamstring might have back stiffness, etc. cetera. Um, in conclusion, uh, look, you and I are both interested in the same thing. We're trying to be fit, we're trying to be healthy. Um, I think there was a study recently, 97% of people do nothing. Um, you're in the 3%. Um, sometimes the 3% goes wrong, but you're still on the right team, I think. Um, where do I fit in? I think trying to explain to you what's wrong, how long it'll take, etc., is important. Um, getting you back not just quicker, but safer and more sustainable, and often those things go together. Um, and not being too complicated generally, but let's get things going, going well. And I think that might be it. Thank you. Cool. Thanks, Matt. Uh, do you want questions? Yeah, if anyone's got any questions for Matt, fire away. No? No, that's okay. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll throw you one. Just okay. on, um, you know, the, the whole um, resting, you know, with an injury. Like, is that the best way? I, I know you sort of touched on it a bit, but... So I guess we use the phrase relative rest. Like, yeah. if you've strained your calf doing a step-up class, you're probably not going to do step-up classes. But you <laughs> would probably start doing calf strength as soon as you can. So... Resting from stuff that's going to injure you, yeah. but not resting. Yeah. You know, if, you, if you can't run, you ride a bike. If you can't swim, you ride a bike. If you can't ride a bike, you swim. So, so basically looking for other things that you could do that aren't going to aggravate the injury, but get that area moving Correct. as, Cause if as you your can. Correct, because if your workload drops, you become yeah. the person who's then going up quickly and you're at risk of injury. Now, it might be something else. Yeah. Um, try and keep your workload up. Yeah, relative rest. Rest from stuff that's harmful. Yep. Keep everything else up. Otherwise, you drop too far. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. What is glad needle? Pardon? What is glad needle? 
A dry needling, dry needling is what you call acupuncture when you're not an acupuncturist. <laughs> <laughs> so, so like, Tegan's not allowed to say that she's doing physiotherapy because it's a protected word. I'm not an acupuncturist. I can't say that I do acupuncture. Dry needling is the, is the, the needles are dry needles. From what we were taught, we're sticking the needle into the trigger point in the muscle, whereas when they, <laughs> when they acupuncturist does the needling, they put the needle in an acupressure point. Ninety, I think it's about 90% of them are exactly the same, okay. um, but it's just the Western version versus the Chinese version. We're looking at putting the needle in the muscle, getting a response from the brain, the brain sending the message back to decrease the tone of the muscle. So very similar theories, just one works on qi, one works on the neurosystem of the body. Sure. Western versus the Chinese. It's a protected word. Yeah. yeah. You can't use it unless you are the protected Cool. Any other questions for Matt? Quiet lot, aren't they?